Hello YouTube, Raul here. In today's video, we're gonna look at how you can improve the performance of your React applications using react.memo, the use memo hook, and the use callback hook. First, let me show you a typical issue in some React applications so that you can know what we are going to work on. Here on the right side, I have a small application. It has an input of, the, of type number, a button, and a list of 200 list items which, which just display a number. The code for everything is here on the left side, the list item, the list which will render the 200 items, and then our main app function which has a use state hook, which is the number and set number, an input, the button, and then the list is rendered right here. Now I have opened the React DevTools. If you missed the previous video with the React DevTools tutorial, link will be in the description below and at the card here at the top right corner. In these DevTools, I'm gonna make sure that we have highlight when a component re-renders checked. So here in the general tab, we will have this right here. Let me make it bigger. It's this check mark right here. With this checked, when any component re-renders, it will be outlined with the color. If I type in the input, you will see we'll, we have a problem with re-rendering. I type some numbers and you can see our whole application lights up. Every list item re-renders whenever we type something in the input. That is because our component, the main app component, re-renders every time its state changes. This is normal React behavior. However, the list should not re-render when the input or the state changes because it's not affected by that input. Its props are just a constant for me. It's the value 200, which I pass and display the list items. There are a number of solutions. One of them is to move the input and the state inside of another component and also the button. So I could just do here const message is gonna be a functional component which is going to return and it's gonna be a div inside of that div we can just copy the input and the button and also the use state move them here here we can comment out these and i'm also gonna comment out the state and get the message component and now Whenever we type into this, only the message component renders, not the whole app component. However, in most cases, the issue comes when you actually need to have this state exactly in this component. So you can't just move it to another component like I did. So I'm gonna go back, comment out this message component and bring back the input and the button in our main app component. And I'm gonna show you how you can improve your app's performance in another way. So first, Let's see, it still re-renders badly. Okay, now the solution to re-rendering is to wrap our list component in react.memo. So react.memo will create a memoized version of our component and this component will only re-render when its props change. So in our case, the props are a constant, they won't change. Now if I save, refresh the page, if I type into the input now, you see that only the outermost component is outlined, that, that is the app component, so only that re-renders. We made it work. We made it render correctly now. React.memo also has a second parameter, so here you can have a function. I'm just gonna create an arrow function here. This function receives two parameters. One of them is the previous props and the second one is the next props. And inside of this, if you want to manually compare the previous props with the next props, you can just return the value that you need to. Here you will, I'm just going to create a comment here. So you will return true if the previous props are equal with the, with the next props and, and false if the props are not equal. If you return false, then the component will know it has to re-render because the previous props are not equal to the next props. You Most of the time you won't need to do this, but if you have some more complex props and want to make sure you only render them when necessary, then this is the way to do it. However, this is just for performance optimization. Don't use this to stop your app from rendering 
when a prop changes. Normally, React apps have to re-render when their props change, just to make sure that everything is up to date. Okay, so I'm going to comment this out and let's go further. The problem with using react.memo is that it can be broken by two things. One of them is passing an object to the memoized component. Let me show you how that works. I'm gonna create a constant called list config, which is gonna be an object and it's gonna have a number of items key and I'm gonna set it to 200. So instead of passing just the value 200 here, I'm gonna change this and pass list config being equal to list config. Now let's go to our list component, change the number of items to list config. And here in the for, I'm just gonna have to do list config dot number of items. So this way, our app will still render those 200 list items. But now if we type into the input, even though the component is memoized, you can see it's broken. Now it again re-renders every list item whenever we type into the input. This can be fixed by using the use memo hook. So let's import it first. And now we will wrap our object with use memo. This will create a memoized version of this object. So use memo. Inside of this use memo, we will have a function which will return our object. And the second parameter that you have to pass to use memo is an array of dependencies. This object will be recreated whenever one of the dependencies changes. Now my object is static, so I don't have any dependencies added to it. In a minute, we will add another element to this object so you can see how it works with the dependencies. But first, let's save the app, refresh our application, and now you will see again it's not highlighted anymore that means our component renders again correctly now let's make this object dynamic to do that we will create another state and i'm gonna call it name and set name it's gonna be a call to use state and it's gonna get, be again initialized with an empty string and i'm just gonna create another input here this is gonna be the value will be equal to name and the on change will be we'll get the event and we'll set the name to event.target.value. Okay, now we have another input. With this input, let's now this input, the value of this input, let's add it to the object. So name will be name. And also, also we will have to add the name to the dependencies array because we need our object to be recreated. So our configuration object needs to be recreated whenever this name changes. Now, if I save, when I type something into the number input, only the app component re-renders. However, if I type something into the name input, you can see the list items re-render because this object is recreated whenever the name changes. This is the way you tell your memoized components, which also use use memo, when they should re-render and when they should not re-render. Now, the last thing that can break your react.memo is if you have to pass a function to your list component. So I'm gonna create a function called pick number and this function will be pretty simple. It's gonna receive a number as an input and it's gonna set the number to that number that is received as an input. Nothing really complicated here. It doesn't really matter what function it is. And we are gonna pass this pick number function to our list component. So pick number is gonna be pick number. Now, just to show you, I won't even use this pick number component inside of our list component. We just have to pass it as a prop. You can use it, it doesn't really change, change anything, but you don't even have to use it and it will cause your component to re-render unnecessary. Let me show you how that works. So if I refresh and type into the use memo input, so the input that should not update our list component, you can see again all our list re-renders. Again, this is an issue. This issue can be solved again with another hook and this is called use callback. And with this use callback, we have to wrap our function. So we will cut this, call the use callback 
hook, we're gonna give it the function and then as our second parameter, it's again gonna be the list of dependencies. In this case, the list of dependencies is just the set number function. So if I save now and refresh the page, now if I type into the number input, the first one, you can see only the upper renders, but if I type into the second one, the one which will change our memoized object, then the whole list re-renders. So this is our intended behavior. We want our list to re-render only when this name changes. This is it for optimizing your re-renders inside your React application. You have to remember that react.memo and these memoizing hooks are only there to optimize your performance. So you shouldn't just go and throw react.memo on every component. This is not the intended way of use. If you have issues, use your React Profiler dev tool to analyze your application and only add the memoization when, when it's needed. If you need a tutorial on how to use that profiler, the link will be in the description below to my tutorial on the dev tools. I hope this video will help you optimize your apps a little bit and know when you should optimize your apps. This was it for the video today. If you have any questions about memoization and how you can use this to optimize your React app's performance, drop them in the comments below. Also, let me know if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel so I'm motivated to make more videos like this. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.